It's time to make your great escape And heaven knows you need a break Forget your duties, forget your cares It's good to get away Hi, and welcome to Augusta Outdoors. Most people think of Savannah Riverside as a place where scientists and engineers help build nuclear bombs. Today, we're gonna to talk with an archeologist named George Wingard, and he's gonna tell us about perhaps the most unusual thing that's ever been found at Savannah Riverside. How are you doing? Great. Good to good, see you. Good, good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for letting me come out and talk to y'all oh, today. No problem, no problem. And tell me what we've got here. <laughs> Poisonous snakes. Poisonous snakes. I thought snakes. we were talking about something with archeology. span we are actually, this box is just uh, kind of a deterrent when we take this artifact out. Uh, a lot of folks like to uh, uh, kind of come up and see what we've got, so this kind of deters them from doing that. So let's take out what we've got here. Wow. I'll let you handle it. Yes. So this is a pot, and it's got a fellow's name on it, Dave, D-A-V-E. And who was Dave? Uh, Dave was a slave, born about 1800. Um, What's interesting about Dave is that he knew how to read and write. We believe he learned to read and write about 1809. Uh, he wrote verses, poems on, uh, on his pots and was well known in Edgefield, in the Edgefield district for making pottery and signing his pots. And this is Edgefield pottery. But... This is an alkaline glazed stoneware pottery. And George, the Edgefield district had lots and lots of potteries and is there any way to figure out how many pieces of pottery came out of Edgefield, and then of those, how many were made by Dave? Well, and again, another good question. There were a lot of different potters, and we know a few of these by name, but Dave being you know, the, the one that uh, most people know due to the fact he wrote on the pots, it's estimated that Dave himself alone made roughly 100,000 pots in his lifetime. He would have started making these probably 1820, when he was about 20 or so, and he disappears uh, in 1873 out of the uh, out of the record so you know 50 years worth of pottery making they estimate about a hundred thousand pots wow. 45 pots have these verses these poems uh, these scriptures on them right. uh, and there's about 150 or so that that are marked with the verses epitaphs the, the, the scriptures his name the date and whatnot so 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 he was not only an artisan and a slave but he was sort of a, a, a writer and an artist he was, he was. And a philosopher in some ways. What sort of poems did he put on, on his pots? One of the first words he writes on a, one of his pots is the word concatenation, which means to be chained or to be linked. He wrote this in 1834. That's a pretty long word. A concatenation, yes, it is. Um, he writes, uh, while still a slave, he writes, the 4th of July has surely come to blow the fife and beat the drum. And you know, this is an ironic verse. He's a slave, but he's writing about Independence, independence. Day. Uh, one, of the, one of the verses that we really find interesting is at, at one point Lewis Miles comes into um, their Turner shed where Dave was working, Lewis Miles being the owner? Dave's owner. Okay. Right. He says, he, he questions Dave about why he's putting the handle where he's putting it or, or the, the strength of the handle. And, and, and Dave continued putting the handle on and then writes on the pot LM for Lewis Miles, right. says this handle will crack. Well, today that pot is, is still in a museum, handles right where he left it, no, no problems. We actually think this handle may have snapped, so we think it kind of, kind of funny. We're, we're glad Dave didn't write LM says this handle will crack on this pot, because uh, yep. we think this may be the cause of this pot's demise 60 plus years ago. That is amazing, it's sort of his voice from, from the past. It is, it's really amazing. Uh, you know, we take this pot out for, uh, uh, on outreach venues, so folks can come up, touch it, feel it, run their fingers across his name. Many of these pots are in museums, they're in, uh, you know, behind glass, they're in private collections, but, you know, this one goes out for the kids to, to see, the, 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 uh, uh, the public to touch and, and really get an idea for Dave's work. Well, it's certainly a beautiful piece, and, and it's also, if I'm not mistaken, it's something that kind of exemplifies what the archaeological research program does. <clears throat> which is to find and preserve things that otherwise would have been lost. Exactly, exactly. Our job for the Department of Energy uh, at on Savannah Riverside is to protect the nearly 12,000 years worth of cultural history. Yeah. Uh, and this was a, uh, you know, a unique find. Uh, you know, we've got a million plus artifacts that we've found over the years uh, from the site, but this uh, uh, is a very unique artifact, one with a great history 
and we find it's a great ambassador for talking about archaeology and going out and telling Dave's story. Well, it sure is, and if it weren't for the program and the find, think how many people would, would not have learned about Dave. Yeah. And thank you for sharing it with oh, us you're today. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you liked what you saw, be sure to check us out on YouTube and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when new videos come out, and, and also please check us out on AugustaChronicle.com.